Welcome to Fireside Yankees. My name is Alex, my co-host here, Nick Nielsen. Today, we're taking a look at one of the Yankees' most underrated bullpen arms, Clay Holmes. This dude has been lights out, lights out since he joined the Bombers last year from the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates were utilizing him very poorly. And I will dive into those metrics for you and give you an idea of what changed. What have the Yankees done to change Clay Holmes? Um, well, first and foremost... They said, throw your sinker and don't stop throwing your sinker because it's one of the only best throw your sinker, calls. basically <laughs> only throw your sinker. And he's done just that, guys. We, we're going to dive into those numbers, take a look at what they've changed, the velocity, the different pitches he's utilized and, you know, what he's taken away um, and why he's been so underrated this year. Honestly, if he keeps up this at this pace, he could be an all star. That's how good he's been. We could, um, have, a but, we could have like four or five Yankee all stars this year, which would be good. It would be very half exciting. the AL team could be Yankees. That's what I'm saying. The half That's the, the team. But, but, Nick, before we dive into Clay Holmes, my friend, how are you doing today? I'm great. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm doing really well. Um, kind of, you know, coming off that high of the playoff Tanaka episode that we got out yesterday with uh, Ryan Garcia. Uh, that was an amazing episode. Super fun. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure to go check it out on the page. Talked about all sorts of trades. I definitely got a little bit ahead of myself. Clamoring for Xander Bogarts to the Yankees. Gabe put me in check, um, but I'm doing really well, my man. Uh, excited for Yankees baseball. I feel like, again, we've talked about this in every episode now. It feels like this team, there's always there's one guy that you could highlight and point out nothing but good things about. And today it just happens to be Clay Holmes. So I'm really excited to dive into him. The dude's been amazing. Like people, for whatever reason, been. still think the Yankees lost that trade. And I'm like, just because Castillo's on the roster and he has the good stuff, and I believe it's Park that we trade as well. Um, they're not they're not as contributive and as important as Clay Holmes is to the Yankees' success, and that's the only that's the end all be all for me in terms of who won the trade is how important of a role do they play, how much are they contributing to their team, and where would the team be without them? So I think the Yankees are in a far better spot since they got Clay Holmes than if they would have hung on to Castillo and Park. Um, no disrespect to them, I believe it was Park, right? Or was it? Yeah, it's Park. Yeah, it's Park. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I'm doing really well though. How about yourself, my man? I'm doing great. Look, the, the every day the Yankees win or they kind of take a nice little cushion, take a step forward with their cushion, the AL East and the overall MLB standings, I get happier and happier. The Giants are looking okay um, in terms of our, our growth. You know, we're, we're making progress. I'm excited Rangers, about it. The Rangers, Rangers baby. What a Rangers game. Rangers are kicking ass. What Ooh. a game. OT win. New York Came Sports, down from guys. 3-1 to win in seven. Ooh, it's been a golden good. age for Boston. I'm tired of that shit. I'm Damn, ready for, the, for New York to take a step forward. And look. The Yankees this year, right? And like a lot of people, if you like you said before, a lot of people still think that maybe Clay Holmes trade was unbalanced. Maybe we lost that trade. But hey, let me let me point something out to you. Yes, sir. When Garrett Cole got knocked out of the game against the Boston Red Sox in the wild card last year, who came in and kicked ass? Clay Holmes in Boston in Fenway. When Clay Holmes comes in in this in the playoffs this year, when he comes in, he shuts down the opposing team and we win that game. Are we really going to be complaining about losing a prospect? No. When we have multiple no. star shortstop prospects and a second baseman Oswaldo Cabrera, uh, Cabrera, like these are guys that that are we don't need. We didn't need Park, right? He's a no. great player, and I hope he Good has hitter. a great career. Hitter. And he's a great hitter. I hope he has an amazing career. But it's about impact now because the Yankees are ready to win now. As we and Clay seen, Holmes is helping us win now. Clay Holmes is helping us win now. So let's take a look at Clay Holmes and. For whatever reason, the guy looks like he's older than he is. He's only 29 years no, old. He could be he could be on the Yankees for another four years and be great, right? He's gonna, be, he's gonna a have free, a really dude, solid career with us. We have we have player control over him until 2025. And he's looking like this right now. He has the best ERA on the roster in terms of bullpen arms. 0 0.49, 8.84 strikeouts per nine. The lowest in his career, not even averaging a walk per nine innings. Hasn't given up a home run this season. A 93.3% left on base rate and a career best 83% ground ball rate. That's um, the he one. is unbelievable. His, his velocity is up to 97.8 miles per hour with his fastball. The dude is on fire. He is it's legitimately crazy. unhittable. He's unhittable. And like and, his 83% ground hitting, ball rate is nuts. That is nuts. Yeah. Yep. It, it's unbelievable. And let me throw out, you throw out a couple of interesting statistics for you before we dive mm -hmm. into like his pitch usage. I want you to kind of look, uh, look into that for me. But here's something interesting, right? His Z contact, so percentage of times a batter makes contact with the ball when swinging at pitches thrown inside the strike zone. His Z contact, 86.3%. So that means that hitters are hitting his pitches inside the strike zone. 
The problem yeah. is they're not getting any 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 actual height on them. He has a career best negative eight point seven, I believe, negative eight point seven launch angle. That's Guys are not that, hitting it. They're hitting it into the dirt. Like they're hitting it they, into the dirt. And when you into win ball games, I know and this is the simplest thing. Like it's it's you score more runs than the other opponent. Yes, but to win games, you have to force your opponent or like not let your opponent hit the ball in the air. Like we talked about this in the Nestor episode where Nestor's biggest gripe was that he gave up a lot of home runs. And now this year, I believe he had a 36% ground ball rate in his He's last start through eight runs. innings. But yeah, but that's the thing through like 42, 44 that's innings. That's not like, bad at all. I'm that's amazing. So we'll take that. that 100%. Garrett Cole gives up homers and he's their ace. He's the ace. <laughs> but he like with Clay Holmes, he does not give up home runs because the Yankees literally told him, as you said, Clay, stop trying to do all this razzle dazzle shit with fastballs and like different variants of it. Literally go up there, throw your sinker and slider. And that's what he's done. You ask for the picks, geez, the pitch mix usage this season. He's thrown 187 sinkers, 46 sliders, three curveballs. And I like to think the curveballs are kind of just a variation of the slider that he tweaked because his slider wasn't getting the break on that certain time he wanted. So basically, 80% of his pitchers are sinkers now. And that's why he's having so much success. When you have his sinker coming in at 97 miles an hour, it's not like Kluber where it was 93, it. just perfectly located. It's 97, and he throws it up in the zone as well. You can't hit it. Like, how, how are you as a hitter supposed to sit there and sit on a sinker that has some of the most break and vertical movement in baseball? Like, Clay Holmes is a grand. I will say I think the strikeouts are going to start coming more because 8.84 is a little bit low for him. Um, and granted, he, he's thrown 18.1 innings. Like, it's not like he's been out there for six innings and we're just using him as some specialist or as a mop-up guy and we're, like, trying to make him better than he is. He has the second most innings on the Yankees and, the I believe, the highest – Mo the most high leverage innings on the Yankees. So Clay Holmes is pitching when it matters and he's getting out of the game without giving up any runs. Like, I don't know. He, he reminds me so much of a righty Britain and I love it because Britain would do that exact same thing. Britain's like career on like left on base percentage was like high eighties, low nineties. The dude's one of the best to ever do it. And without Britain this year, I was like, who's going to pick up that slack. And Clay Holmes has been that guy. And then some, like Clay Holmes is a very, very valuable reliever. Like you said at the beginning of the episode, could be an all-star. And if we have Clay Holmes as an all-star and Mike King as an all-star, and because for whatever reason, you know, everyone's going to vote him one, or just Chapman an all-star, that's three bullpen arms that are all-stars? Like, come on. Good night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at some point this season, the Yankees are going to have to find another another guy to help close games because yes. Chapman, his velocity is down an unbelievable good. amount. It's really and questionable. And he can't locate still. Like, before it was okay that he couldn't locate because he'd throw 100 and that splitter would still get, like, a deafening strikeout. But now it's like you're not even really getting the swings and misses and the strikeouts. You can't locate. His command's all over the place, yep. Call Pittsburgh and get David Bedner from them. He's an incredible closer, and I don't think he cost a ton. I know everyone wants to call Pittsburgh for Brian Reynolds, but I'd much rather have a closer that is used in high leverage innings that has five years of control than Brian Reynolds. I know that may sound blasphemous, but Clay Holmes, if he's if we do decide to use him as a closer, and I will say the I closer argument's it. tough because it's like a lot of people like to look at the closer as the best reliever on the team because they're the closing pitcher. But a lot of the time, they're not used in the most important spots of the game. A lot of the time, you have the closer coming up against the seven, eight, nine hitters. But that's what I like about Clay Holmes and Mike King right now is that we're using them when we need to and when we feel best to use them. So I, it's hard for me to say get rid of a role as closer because that would mean taking King and, and Clay out of their spot and kind of potentially minimizing their innings and their usage. And then, therefore, putting a role in their spot in a much more dangerous situation. Like if I had the choice of a role just coming into the ninth to work a clean inning every time, or a role just coming into the seventh with a runner on first, expecting to get three outs, I would choose the ninth inning shut case every time. So I don't know, but Clay Holmes, he could be used anywhere and thrive in that role. Like he sucked in Pittsburgh, but that's because they didn't work his repertoire to his strengths and they used him so poorly. Like they, they, they used him like Tony La Russa uses his bullpen arms where it's like, if he dies, he dies. CC Ivan Drogo. Uh, like, I, I don't know, man, you can, you can kind of enlighten me a little bit more here as to what it is. That's clay that clay is doing. That's so different this year. That's led to the 83% ground ball rate specifically. Cause that's the so, best in baseball amongst relievers right. by 14%. 
I believe right. Hody Glaber posted it on Twitter, and that's where I saw that number. But it's a substantial margin between him and the other guys. Right. So what did so what did Clay Holmes do? Right. What did Clay Holmes do to help himself uh, generate more ground balls and essentially just become a dominant reliever? Well, he took he took his curveball out of his repertoire entirely. Right. Let's see his partial season last year when he joined when he was with Pittsburgh. He was throwing his curveball. Twenty percent of his pitches were being allocated towards his curveball. Jeez. When he joined the Yankees, one point eight percent. This year, he hasn't thrown a curveball. Maybe it was a variation of a slider. Yeah, like I said, they, Statcast has two, and I don't yeah, think those so are two real curveballs. Essentially, it's zero. <laughs> essentially, yeah. it's zero. Yeah. The Yankees have said, "Don't waste your energy throwing curveballs when your sinker is your best pitch, and it gets so much break." And okay, so here, here's here's the concept, right? Like his his ground ball rate changed from uh, 68.7% to 83%. So let's say it's a 15% difference. Where did that 15% come from? His curveball. It came from him stopping throwing the freaking curveball. Yeah, they Clay got Holmes. under it and lifted it. Right, and this year, another interesting metric that, I, that I'm that i looking at, the, the percentage of pitches a batter swings at outside of the strike zone is a career high at, at 38% of of. Mm-hmm. Of, of, uh, of batters are swinging at, at pitches outside of the strike zone. So when you're looking at Clay Holmes, you're, they're saying to him, look, pick a target. Let's say it's the outside corner of the batter, mm-hmm. right? See the outside corner of the batter and throw your sinker there over and over again because some of them are going to land outside the strike zone and some of them are going to land inside the strike zone. And they're right. all, they all have insane movement. And the batter is only seeing – he's seeing it going towards the same place, but it's ending in a different place. Yeah, right? that's why it's so, so disgusting. Like, it's so hard to predict, and then and then you throw in that slider that sweeps across the plate, and the deception met the deception uh, profile now is is expanding, and like you're seeing him, and 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 again, a lot of credit goes to the catchers for calling these great games and yes. really calling how to when to use his different those two different pitches and when to bait those batters on the sliders and bait them on the sinkers and throwing them high, throwing them low on the corners. His location isn't his biggest strong suit. No, it's his velocity and it's his break. Just get up there and throw, like, dude. And then it'll, the just ball, there and well, like as long as, and especially with someone like you said, like Trevino behind the dish or even Higgy when he's in the game, if they set low and away and Clay throws a sinker and it goes low and are low and inside, Trevino is able to get there quick enough and not have any problems and frame it almost perfectly. Like that's the other thing. Clay Holmes, I will say, part of his uh, part of his ability does come from that defensive side of the catcher. Where it's like because you can just throw whatever he wants and the guy can frame it damn near perfectly, that's going to help you a ton. That's why Miguel Castro has been really successful with this. Wandy Peralta a ton with his sinker and changeup. Like we've had a lot of guys that throw just absolute disgusting stuff in the past, and we've had to kind of eat our words because of it, and we've struggled defensively because of it. But now that Trevino and Higgy are there, like basically saying we're not going to let any like mistakes happen behind the plate if we have anything to say about it. You've seen every one of our bullpen arms get better, except for like Green and Chapman. But those two are just, in my opinion, not because of the Yankees. Just those two individual players are kind of winding down from their pinnacle of their careers. It's just how it is. Like Chad Green's poor arm has been thrown through the ringer. So I don't expect him to be this elite bullpen arm that he once was. He's still a good arm. He'd be like most teams setup arm. But with Clay Holmes, it's like we haven't even seen the best of him yet. He's only had... Basically now less than still less than a season's worth under Matt Blake, under the tutelage of the staff and the other arms around him. And we're seeing the results already. So I can only imagine how good he's going to look come June or July. And to go off of the slider, like you said, when you mix that in, it's so disgusting. Last year, his slider had a spin rate of 2460 RPMs, which is pretty great. And it had a whiff percentage of 37%. This year, it's up to 2556 spins uh, RPMs and then a 48% whiff rate. So he's kind of amped that up a little bit and the results, granted it's a hundred, which seems like a lot, but for a pitch that's already a massive breaking pitch, it isn't a ton, but the whiffs are, are speaking for it. When you strike, when you see people swing and miss over it or under it 10% more often, that's got to do a lot for your confidence. So it seems like all of his pitches that sucked, he's kind of said, screw it. I'm going to be a true two pitch pitcher. And now he's one of the best pitchers in baseball. It was like, same thing with Andrew Miller and his four seam slider. No one could hit him because he only threw those two pitches for like three years. And he single-handedly almost brought back the Indians guardians. Now a championship. So I don't know if we can get clay Holmes to be like a righty Britain, righty Andrew Miller in terms of how we use him in this bullpen. That is insane for this team. 
because Loizaga is struggling right now. And once he finds it, that's another arm we got going. So I don't know, dude. I just think that the importance of Clay being really good right now is not being talked about enough by Yankees fans and by just casual fans of baseball. Like Clay Holmes is not a name that I expect many casual fans to know, but he is a name that many casual fans should begin to know. Yeah, I, many casual fans are going to start to learn this guy's name. And the last the last number I'll throw out is Fangrass has an interesting statistic um, mm-hmm. essentially called clutch. And yes. clutch is a big one because when you're a playoff team, you need to have guys that can compete in the That's biggest That's a big moments. stat, Alex. You know, exactly. Say, I, didn't, so I didn't think that one mattered. <laughs> the description of clutch is how much better or worse a player does in high leverage situations than he would have done in a context neutral environment. So every year up to this point, Clay Holmes is at a negative clutch factor, right? Mm. So he's been a negative, a net negative in a clutch. Them boys moment. in Pittsburgh. Yep. This year, he's at positive 0.15. So I don't really know what the number stands for, but he's been, a, I'll just say he's a positive factor. He has uh, eight shutdowns and one meltdown, perceivingly. So, uh, and the meltdown, the time, I will say, was I think he gave up a rope double down the line and gave up a run. I think that was so the only lucky. run he gave up. And that was the first week and a half of the season. Right. Okay. So he's he's still ramping up because I remember that, and it was like a good yeah. pitch, and it was against I think Boston or maybe Toronto, and they just roped it down the line, and I was like, "How did you hit that?" So I'm not too worried about that number because like one meltdown is like that. If we want to look at a Roldis's meltdown, there's got to be like six. Yeah, that's probably very very bad. <laughs> it's definitely negative, but you it's know, definitely yeah, Roldis. If a Roldis <laughs> has positive, I I may have to. He's had a couple of meltdowns. Break my love for fan graphs. <laughs> yeah, but Clay Holmes definitely looking like a positive, net positive in the clutch factor. So when it comes down to crunch time in the in the future, those big high leverage moments, you can depend on Clay Holmes to get it done, guys. And that's and that's really what we're looking for. We need guys that can get it done in big moments. Cardiac Clay. Yeah, that's there's a good cardiac one. Cardiac Clay, baby. A little bit of cardiac Clay, guys. But yeah, we, we got the People's Ace Nestor. We got cardiac yep. Clay, Clay Holmes. <laughs> Ooh, we have a lot of good players this year. It's it's really exciting. Um, but guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Talk, take a look at Clay Holmes, the advanced metrics, what he's doing this season, and what he's doing differently to make sure his his game continues to develop and grow. Um, Matt Blake and that pitch coaching staff has been working phenomenal. Wonders. They've Oof. been working wonders, and especially in the health department. Shout out to the Eric Cressy and those health guys kicking yeah. ass too. Tanner it Swanson with the catchers. Tanner Swanson, really everyone great deserves job. a pat on the back right now, dude. Like, yep, Dylan no Lawson. Doing yeah, the hitting, hitting coach. coach. That's phenomenal. why we're scoring 10 runs a game now. Yep, insane. They're finally hitting their stride. Every, all the coaches are doing a phenomenal job, and mm-hmm. the players are picking up what they're putting down. So hopefully they can continue this, maintain the, the excellence they've put on the field so far. But if you like this episode, guys, make sure to drop a like and subscription below on YouTube. If you're listening on Spotify and Apple, make sure to hit the su- subscription button as well so you don't miss an episode. Much love as always, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees. Adios.